Yeah, so um, our next presentation is by Reed, uh, and he's going to be uh, discussing differences between using uh, solitary distributed uh, programming of A and B and then packages like solitary Okay, I'm Wen Shi Yang um, from the uh, Center of Education in Natural Resources and Planning of the University of Queensland. Uh, this center started uh, right with the uh, Department of Agriculture and Fisheries in Queensland. So we kind of like uh, work together to do the start assessment for species uh, in Queensland waters. Um, so this talk is the reason is that. Uh, um, I start to learn the A, D, and B while I do my first stop assessment. It's kind of like a force I need to use that. And in August this year, I kind of occasionally learned the stop synthesis and A, D, and B. Uh, so I think that this is a kind of like an opportunity for me to share my experience to using about using these three uh, software uh, from user perspective. So my background is statistics. Uh, I'm doing stock assessment stuff on uh, June 2016. That's the time I jumped from one position to another position. And at that time, I uh, think uh, that is looking for people to do the assessment for the Scott, because at that time, a teacher went complained that the decreasing of catch in Scott. So I think that did a uh, uh, stop assessment for Scott at that time, but uh, it's all called in AD and D. And at that time, I didn't know why it's the AD and D, but I did call the user up or made it a lot to do that, like a uh, Mark Chen Monte Carlo for mathematical uh, statistical models. So I start to learn that. Um, you know, really some read somebody's code is always very difficult. And also, even I train in statistics, so I also need to look at the uh, mathematical equations. So I want to make sure all the code in AD and D is kind of like a bit of a match with the mathematical equation in the previous report. So of course, I guess some, sometimes people make mistakes or some errors. I, I fix that, and then we got a report for 2016 and say that actually scalp is in bad shape. So and then there's a continuous uh, 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 project from FRDC. Uh, so and then we kind of like review the uh, stock model for scalp. And so kind of like uh, my general background uh, in doing the stuff. So I think uh, uh, the Queensland government uh, set up a fishery, a uh, sustainable fishery strategy from 2017 to 20, uh, 2027. And it's expected that uh, uh, in 2027, the catch rate can be around 60% of the region. Biomass and also say that all these major uh, should based on the evidence uh, results. So, as you can see, the stock assessments will become very important role in these strategies. Uh, I read uh, the, the report, it seems uh, I saw that at least there are 28 key species need to be done. I think that this is the initial high priorities. I think that's more. So we don't have much time. So that's what it's like. Now it's 2018 and uh, 2020 is coming. Uh, we just have like, seven years left. Uh, so we need to uh, assessable and repeatable and switch stock assessment process. So that means we cannot use uh, our old style to do the stock assessment. So you can see, uh, I think. That's the reason that organized uh, a staff synthesis workshop in August. 
is shock energy is uh, energy power. And instead of before that week, I also take a PMD workshop. Uh, the shuttle is actually the same guy. So I just occasion learn these uh, two um, programs. So here's the team uh, for the stock assessment. So what's the point about? Here is uh, the first one is I want to see whether I can use stock synthesis as a variational model in the future for stock at least because that's a species I'm kind of familiar with and I also uh, call the stock model for this species. And then also would like to compare the ADMB and the TMB based on the custom model we developed. So this model is a uh, a spatial model also trying to also include some uh, environmental factors. Uh, that would be uh, sea surface temperatures. Uh, we found out sea surface temperature has negative impact on uh, stock catch rate. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that later. So the outline here is a uh, basically. I will give very briefly introduction to ABMB and PMBS star synthesis. Uh, basically, I have no idea. Uh, kind of basically, that's based on why no. And then, Joe described uh, the scope model. And then, shift the scope of data to the star synthesis. And the other way around, I will fit a uh, custom scope model to the scope data. Okay, why? And the summary, well, basically, I list, uh, uh, I think you, you see the, um, the focus questions I list uh, on the summary. So basically, ADMB and GMB, they are uh, C plus space uh, templates. So um, if you know R, uh, you definitely would know how to code it. Uh, if you know function, or C++, you will know how to do that because you need to collect uh, the variables, right? And both of them will do the, uh, they are doing the automatic differential equations for you. They will try to find it uh, solution. And also, they all use uh, Laplace approximation. So if you have model with uh, random effects, so um, if you, so the dimension of the render effect is very large. Uh, it's very hard to get the result for all the uh, optimization values. So they use a Laplace approximation to do that. And, and uh, basically, ADMB is a uh, uh, command line based. So you need to know, if you use a window, you know, need to know dots. And now you don't need public can use a PowerShell. If you use Linux, you need to use a terminal to do that. And of course, once you run the model, you can use a map or any other uh, discrete language to collect your data to generate a uh, fancy um, plots. And ADMB based, uh, PMB basically is um, architecture. So to do that, um, you need to get, I mean, you need to get authorization to install R tools, and because R tools will have uh, C plus plus and Fortran. So once you download that and then you install the TMB, so but when you build your models, you will need to understand the C plus plus language first, and then you use R to call that C plus plus modules. Start synthesis. For my understanding, based on the, the paper I read, it has long history. And then somehow you jump to the ADMB to do the optimization. Uh, I think uh, if you go to the uh, uh, Star Synthesis website, they also provide a graphic interface. Uh, somehow uh, it seems the user command line is more easier. And also, you can get uh, uh, an R page. Call the R4SS to summarize the, uh, the output from the 
star synthesis uh, is very fantastic. Uh, you don't need to write a code to summarize all these results. So here's a flowchart. Uh, why do the staff assessment uh, as a fresh user? Using the ADID, TMD is basically with, at the very beginning, we all have data. And then use ADMB and TMD, we would think about, okay, now we have data, what kind of data type we have, what uh, major information we have, and we start to create a textbook and to find the mathematical equations to build the models and then write the code. For the stock synthesis, you read the paper and it's very comfortable. It's very general, not somehow very complicated. And then you will start whether I can use this data or not. And you start to, to jump on uh, the data, information, data set you have. Uh, so it was that basically that's uh, the difference between uh, using the ADMB, TMB, and the staff synthesis from my experience. So before to really use these three tools, let me talk about the uh, staff features. So it's, uh, I think the, that feature is start from 1950. And then the compulsory notebook was introduced in 1988. And fishermen need to record what they caught in the 30 minutes by 30 minutes doing something like that. And then somehow I think the stock fishery was fresh in 1996. So and then the coach was introduced in 1997. So I think there were only three closures, and now we have uh, seven uh, closures, six, six more areas. Well, here you can see, we cannot see this info. We cannot see uh, the catch information of the closure of the workbook data because fishermen only recorded what they call for 30 minutes by 30 minutes screen, not closure, right? And also we have uh, about the minimum equal size that's made a change over time. We also want to uh, uh, include this information into the, the models well. So, so basically, the, the model we we developed for the FRPC project work uh, is for these ten areas. We want to see whether we can do that for, by using the stuff synthesis or not. Uh, based on, and also stop uh, the mass mark age is about like four years old and can grow up to one hundred and twenty millimeters. And the spawning season is from April to October. And this is uh, uh, the catch data. And for scar fishery, we always use a basket instead of like a number or uh, uh, the biomass that weight. So here you can see that the, the, the thing I want to point out is that that. Okay, let's start from here. We have a report. We have a report saying that a small fishery was back in uh, 2017. So then we have a closure introduced for start from 2017. That's what it is from uh, May to October, and the fishermen can allow to, to do the fish and the close again in May. That's 2018. But before that, there is a, a winter closure in October. Or in the, that's what the 2001. And also, if you look at into the detail, you can see the closure actually changed the, the fisherman's uh, catching activity. Because closure were open in January, so you can see the chart here. Uh, you cannot see before the 2001. Yeah. So, and we will use the catch rate as a standardized catch rate based on the local data. So we cannot get a standardized catch rate for the closures. So what we can do is just, because we will use the local data, so it's all just have information on 30 minutes by 30 minutes break. So what we can do is just 
get catch rate for this big area. I call it pen you pull, and this big area for the pen buster head. And also, we have start with have a survey data. Um, we have survey data uh, that's always happening in October. That we have, I think at that time, I think the department have budget. So it's start from 1997 to 2006. And then after the, the report in 2016, we and uh, a new survey again start from 2007. I mean, this is for data, 2017 to 18. Uh, the, that's uh, then we just have a, a new survey data, uh, just finished last month. Based on this survey data, we described uh, uh, the stuff into two uh, age group. One is called the zero plus and the one plus. Based on the same age, meaning in the grade course. And also, we look at uh, the, the relationship um, between the environmental factors and the catch rate. So, we look at uh, uh, the temperature data. Here, you see that we basically just pick a, a simple linear regression, overrate uh, the catch rate with the temperature before that month. So, the slope is uh, basically the slope of a simple linear regression that can represent the relationship between the Caesar temperature and, uh, and the catch rate. So here you can see all the slope are negative. So that means um, the temperature has negative impact on the catch rate. And also we found that the, the catch rate is in November, December, and January. These are three major months of the Start picture in Queensland. We found uh, a pattern here that tells us the, the, the winter temperatures uh, several months before uh, kind of like I had negative impact on uh, the catch rate. So we want to implement that. And so, what, how we implement that is we put that into the, uh, the natural maturity component of the stock model. Okay, now let's start uh, using use the star synthesis. So for star synthesis, we basically you need to prepare for uh, input files, stars, starter, data, control, and the focus. Um, starter and control are relatively easy, uh, but the data and control data format is uh, a bit complicated. So what I'm doing is I use R to generate that. Instead, just to open that that two file to input the files. So, um, and also read the manuals. Just go back and forth, trying to finish the the data and the controls. But, and then I'm going to try to get an example for the Pacific Future Manual Console. But I found out. Um, most of their example, I use a version of 3.24. Uh, the format is very different from 3.30. So it cost me a lot of problems. Then, what I found is uh, at least some of this is just a preliminary uh, test. So I found that at this moment, I just I think uh, I still can use uh, monthly data and to deal with. Uh, uh, 84 months, but I cannot use uh, uh, I know there's an example using the, doing the spatial analysis, but I'm not familiar with the synthesis, so I, I decided not try to do that. And I can easily convert the glass key to move away, but uh, I don't know how to do the density, so I don't include the density data, and also I don't include the, the survey data at this moment. Uh, so I include the minimum equal size, but just use the, the current minimum equal size, that will be 19 millimeters. But that depends on time. And at this moment, I don't include the, 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 the winter temperature. And when I finish, I'm very happy. That's, I finished like uh, six, uh, three months, uh, three weeks ago. 
And then I got arrows. I don't know why. Um, and and then I try to because I use the, the the version I download in August. So and then I try the others. I know that's successful. It's also getting the same error. So I Google it. I cannot find it. Somehow I revisit the VLAB. I thought they have updated version. Uh, I think the reason is that at that time my school computer is updating the Windows system. Somehow it causes this issue. But the, the, the reason I think I want to point out here is uh, because I don't have source code. So why I have executive uh, files? So if there's any issue coming out, I, I, it's very hard for me to find uh, how to solve this. Well, basically they respond very quickly. So. And I run that, and let's say I use R for uh, SS, they can quickly summarize the, all the, the, the files, all the, the results you want to see. And then you can use that to check whether uh, the system is doing the right thing, like you import the data, reasonably, and all these things. Uh, so I think R for SS is fantastic. So I hope. Uh, the future general model need to have these kind of tools to do that. As you can see, I actually just to do the monthly uh, data, I can like use 12 seasons. Now let's use the ADMB and the TMB. Okay. So you see ADMB and TV is different. So here I just use uh, we have developed uh, the stack model for all FRBC projects. So we know that, um, and, and then also I have the ADMB code that I developed by, I wrote by myself. And then I find out once you have ADMB code, I can easily you know, translate that into the, the TMB. And I, I think there's one thing you need to be aware of is that uh, TMB uses an uh, index system different from ADMB. So that's the stuff I need to be aware of. Uh, if not, that's that's fine. At the same time, also we'll have our script with me to be, to make sure ADMB and TMB really do the the stuff or the writing. So that's the way I check whether my ADMB call or TMB call is correct or not. So because I don't have also SS. So I need to write uh, our code or better code to summarize all these data. So here is a, basically the, just one example. That's the way I summarize my customer bonds. And so here's a comparison. So I think that for my third model is, uh, I find that it's very hard to, uh, to, to estimate the, the speed. It's always in the, uh, the robot. And I also lack the MCNC. I know that because uh, I found out MCNC just explored the, uh, the domain. It didn't give me any uh, coverage result. So that's the reason I didn't need to make a robot. As you, you can see, I mean, look at that. Compare the ADMB result with the EMB result. EMB result give me 0.51. I think the reason here is because uh, the initial value I give is a 0 0.5, 1, uh, 0.5. So you can see TMB didn't really doesn't uh, doesn't explore the uh, perimeter space very much. That's why I guess. But the the good thing from my point of view is these three uh code they all told me that the uh, temperature uh, system temperature in fact, uh, it's very important. They are, they are significant. And yesterday, I found out uh, TMB does something I don't really want to see. Uh, like I said, I will always pre I just, I will prepare the R script to check whether uh, the NDMB code or TMB code do the right thing for me. So my view is I, I prepare the R script and I run the ADMB and TMB can the perimeter estimate. I will input the, the perimeter estimate into my R script to see 
equation, the objective function value is just the kind of like a similar, supposed to be identical. But I found out PMB uh, give me that I'm very, very different from my last script. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why, so I probably need to do more investigation. And the one more thing I want to mention here why write the R code, TMB code, and the ADMB code. I don't write a, a efficient code. I just want to, I just write a code to match my mathematical equations. The reason is I want to make sure all these three, uh, especially TMB and ADMB code, give me the right answer instead of the efficiency. So this is a summary. I just created the, the question from the uh, focus, uh, major focus. So I think that, uh, that's important. Uh, let's answer the, answer the first question. Yeah, I think that's important. Uh, if we can have uh, staff assessors work with uh, uh, computer science, professional computer scientists, but I think the issue, another issue is I think the computer scientists can yeah, really like write very um, efficient code. Uh, they may not really familiar with um, all these mathematical models. So I think I think also it's better to include some mathematicians or statisticians to check whether uh, the efficient program really do the right thing in terms of the, all the mathematical point of view. Right? And and the second question, how can we ensure that with all the deserved features we include the phone remain computer efficient? Um, well, it's depends on how good the uh, uh, computer scientists can do that. Can I really answer that? But the third question is that it's very important. So, for example, I may not keep working on this type of work for a while. So the new people will come in, so it's better uh, to have a standard code in order for the uh, new recruitment to understand the code. Don't waste their time. And, well, uh, at this moment, I don't have any answer to answer the, the four questions. So. Yeah, that's all my talk. Thanks. Very interesting talk in problem. But if you, what's your sense of your favorite way of doing it? Did everything match? Or did you see between stock synthesis and your your own code? Were you getting the same answers? Well, no. Uh, I think uh, I haven't compared the result. The reason is, uh, the, well, at this moment now, the thesis it doesn't include uh, a lot of information. It doesn't include, uh, it's not spatial model. And also, it's just use one, uh, uh, I think just use one, and there's minimal size, less than 90 millimeters. It's not in on time. So to make this comparison, I don't think it's, uh, it's clear enough. Yeah. Did you had to do this particularly painful business of converting from ADMB to TMB? The first thing I do is look at the first function call with the same initial values. Did you do that? Because that's usually, if, 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 they're, if they're different, then obviously there's a bug in the code somewhere. Um, but if they're the same, then the interesting thing is why did ADMB and TMB not converge the same solution? Because mathematically they're supposed to. Okay. So, why do this comparison and make sure all the code structure are the same and also the initial value are the same, everything are the same. Even, uh, like for example, TMB provide a density function similar to R. I just call that by myself to make sure the structure are the same, everything the same. I think that's possible, but I, I cannot control that. What I can control is the initial value, go, and also 
I use the PMB to minimize the, the phase of the A, B, and B, right? Okay, so something like that. But the value between the phase, I cannot control. That's good. So, and just, and you, said, you said you gave it the same initial values, but, but I think what Andre was asking was if the function gives the same, the same result when you give that, that's also gone through the process of converting hundreds of models from A to TMB. And if I've seen a different result, it's always been because of one exact thing, and that was my problem. I did it differently. Yeah, I can describe it anything else. Yeah, I can show you that it's on my laptop. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you.